Welcome to Frisian Marshes! And today spawning in the east corner of the map in orange, we've got 3DB playing as the French. His opponent today in the south, representing Team 3D also, is Anatand in blue as the Chinese. Welcome, welcome everyone to this Age of Empires 4 casted game, where we're going to have some of the very best players in Age of Empires 4 battling it out on this map. This map which has a lot of food, a lot of sheep, a lot of fish, a lot of deer, a lot of everything. And uh, as you can see, plenty of wood as well in, in the middle of the map. It's actually very, like, resource dense, this map. And you can kind of venture out into the uh, into the wild, into the outskirts to really get hold of the, you know, kind of rich resources that this map has to offer. We'll see how this one pans out with the gold always forward on this map. It's always very exposed, can be very risky, and, you know, you've got to protect this if you can. And with a civilization matchup with the French versus the Chinese, often the Chinese will need to protect the gold. You know, the French getting the French Royal Knight nice and early could try and put some pressure. Now, speaking about the Chinese strategy and the civilization matchup, obviously the Chinese economy bonuses is really what makes them shine. The ability to get two town centers, Song Dynasty, very, very nicely, pump out those villages. And it could be an option to get a town center here would be quite nice, protecting the gold and the, uh, the wood. And it's already got the wood at the back line there in the corner of the map to be protected. Maybe even think about getting a town center on shorefish. Could be an option. The French would like to be aggressive. The French perhaps are a little bit more adaptable. They've got that kind of feudal edge aggression in them. And so do the Chinese in some way, but they don't have sort of an immediate push once the age up happens. And so we might expect to see maybe an outpost on that gold vein. We'll have to see what it decides to do to protect it. It does have the village there, so if the villagers need to garrison inside, they can. It's a really nice spot as well, because if the villagers get pushed off this mill... And the food there because of a night, maybe they can always garrison inside. Probably won't be able to because, you know, this is a bit too close to the town center. And these guys, the town center, they actually kind of destroy cavalry, to be honest. And uh, well, the French have a couple of options. They could go to town center, could go for a heavy feudal age push into two town centers. They could just go heavy feudal age push, but we'll have to see. It's a bit difficult at the high level because the high level players are usually very good at defending. So generally, like all in feudal age plays tend not to happen all that often. But we will see. It could be the case that the French will look to try and get some map control, get some dominance on the map to be able to secure all this rich sources of food. Speaking of which, B has already gone out, ventured out onto the shorefish, making use of the uh, fast food income from there. And, uh, well, I'm excited to see how this one plans out. You know, we could talk about the possible options for the two civilizations. Truth be told, when you've got 3DB playing, it's very difficult to predict. This guy is, you know, it's very difficult to understand sometimes what he's going to do. He just, he plays the game so differently, and it's one of the reasons why I love watching his games. I think it's one of the reasons why you guys love watching his games too, in which case, actually, I want to know something. What is your, or who, rather, is your favourite player in Age of Empires 4 to watch in these kind of casted games? Is it BCQT? Is it is it 3DB? Is it is it Demu? Is it Lucifron? Is it Vortex? Let me know in the comment section below. I'd like to hear your thoughts. I think 3DB has got to be up there, right? Uh, he's really, really fun to watch. I'll wait, I'll wait for you guys to let me know in the comment section below and see what you guys say. And speaking of that, seeing as we're waiting for both players to hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Hold the phone. It's the Chamber of Commerce for 3DB. He's going to go for trade and that's an interesting approach. So it's not necessarily going to be a heavy feudal age push from him. He might still get a stable. He might look to get a French Royal Knight out early. Maybe. We'll see. But he's going to be trading. The question is, does he trade to this post in the north or does it go all the way across the map i mean that's the longer distance we get a better return there but the chinese could look to pressurize that holy smokes look at the number of sheep 18 there well things are going to be different in this match i'm glad i picked this one to cast for sure so you definitely want to stick around for this one but yeah let me know in the comment section below who your most sort of favorite player to watch would be or is uh, but more importantly if you've been enjoying the content on the channel so far at casted games do please give the video a thumbs up it actually really helps the videos out immensely for the algorithm it's really really helpful totally free of course and uh speaking of free well these traders will be coming from the chamber of commerce for free uh when b actually looks to get those upgrades so he'll be getting one trader for free at least already for the wheelbarrow and then when he gets the other upgrades his traders will spawn out automatically so it's a really nice landmark for them in terms of trade often overlooked because of the powerhouse of the school of cavalry as you can see already two traders uh, will be coming in very very shortly he's actually going to get another market as well so he's going to match booming economy for booming economy the chinese have got the barbican of the sun first so i don't know i take it back it's got this barbican of the sun second 
So we'll be getting that Song Dynasty first, and you can see just walling here just to avoid any sort of chop throughs. Sometimes villagers can come through sneakily there and do just that. And we'll be getting some of the Imperial officials. A very strong unit for the Chinese. Going to be boosting up the economy, tax collection, and also supervising various drop-off points and even production buildings at times. Going to be venturing out to stone. So it's going to be a second town center approaching as well with the Varbican defending very nicely with the Palisade walls as well. But interestingly enough, with the traders out and about for the French, you know, it's going to be gathering a lot of gold. 124 gold! And he is indeed going to that western trade post. So, well... It's going to be trade versus villager boom. We'll see who ends up winning and the market there as well. So B is going to be really start pumping out those those traders. Already ahead in terms of eco numbers by three so far. And that's going to possibly expand quite quickly, especially with that second market. We'll have to see what the timing is for like the second town center where he places it. And I said wall's going to be walling up just to protect the economy a bit more. It does have that stone and stone and gold here as well to be able to use if he so wishes the Chinese. But we can see already the game, how it's kind of developing, how Anatan is actually kind of cornering himself a little bit. Giving up a little bit of map control potentially, but he's going to be getting a nice villager boom because of this. The question is, does he scout the trade? Like, has he seen it yet? Because it's kind of important, right? I don't think he's seen it just yet. And he doesn't actually see the landmark. He doesn't see very much of what B is up to. Kind of awkward scenario, actually. He's probably thinking, what's going on? Doesn't see any French Royal Knights, so possibly considering that maybe the French went for two town centers potentially. I don't think he knows about the trade just yet. We'll have to see when he figures that out. And he's going to get a town center on the shorefish quite nicely. I was kind of hoping for it to be a bit more closer. I think, it's a, I think there's a potential to get it a bit closer than that. But in any case, it is what it is. Uh, but he still doesn't see what's up. He's going to go to that direction now just to see what's happening in case the trade is going on. Because he doesn't see a French Royal Knight. He'd certainly have expected one by now. He sees villagers out on the shorefish. Can't really deny that, of course. Quite a few villagers. Holy moly, I didn't even know that was happening. Let's get rid of the fog of war. But yeah, I guess he's probably expecting trade to be going north. That's such a kind of funny, because he's not. He's going westwards. Going to harass villagers, maybe. They're getting pulled out to the other shorefish. Just a little bit left on that one there. Uh, but he doesn't see it. He sees the production buildings now. When he sees the second stable, well, it's actually the first stable, but you know, if he had a school of cavalry, it would have been a second one. I think he'll know that there's trading happening. He will see it now. Right, he spots it. Now, what's his reaction going to be? That's the question. I suspect he's going to drop a barracks for some spearmen. Is she going to open up with a stable, interestingly enough? That's such a kind of an interesting choice. Especially with the uh, the knights on the field. But a decent amount of gold coming in for B. It does have the villager, or the uh, eco leader at least at this point, by about nine. Which is kind of significant. Holy moly, has he invested in another market? No, just two for now. But obviously, the Song Dynasty 210 center is up and running for the Chinese. Second town center only came recently. And uh, a lot of food will be coming in for the Chinese. This is also being supervised. It's actually kind of crazy how much food will be coming in for him. But let's go on to that. Yeah, 700 food per minute. The meal being supervised with this number of villagers on shorefish. It's going to be very, very nice for him. Does he drop a, a, a barracks for spearmen? Just a stable so far. A double stable. So he's going to heavy on the horsemen. Now, we'd be expecting to see uh, the French just double down on knights now, perhaps. But uh, the tricky situation for me is that he can't really scout this, right? He can't send anything in here to find out what's happening. There's no way in. So he kind of has to play blind a little bit. So he's going to go for the traditional knight archer composition for the French. And he's had pretty decent amounts of time for trading. Let's just see how many traders he's got at the moment. Eight so far. It's looking good. Interestingly enough, two town center, Song Dynasty being uh, matched or maybe even outdone by the, uh, the French trade today on Frisian marshes. Don't often see the strategy, so I'm excited to see how this is going to plan out. Certainly holding me in good stead in terms of medium to late game. You see the base building happening as well already. Could expect to keep here later on in the game to make these uh, units even cheaper. Looking to get Imperial Examinations. Kind of getting the extra gold from the tax by the Imperial officials. There's the blacksmith. Able to get some upgrades on that front as well. Just to bolster up the army. Army numbers are actually pretty equal. I would expect to see uh, some of the horsemen just to try and... Snipe some of the traders if you can. Hasn't really been able to do any damage on those just yet. He does have a decent number of horsemen now together with the scout. So going to be acting now with a bit more awareness of what's happening with that vision with the scout. Alright. Has the potential to snipe a trader maybe. But uh, B will spot this. Going to send a couple of knights there. The trouble is the horsemen should 
maybe pick out maybe one or two traders. But they don't dish out too much damage and they have to back off now because of the knights. It's just about being surprising here. I, I'm a bit surprised by the addition of the horsemen, to be honest. The lack of spearmen in this. Because the horsemen can't really take huge fights, as I say that. There is a, a couple of spearmen popping out now, so that's happening. Oh, the knight's going to dive this, actually. I'm not sure about that, but B is going to go underneath the barbican. The spearmen do look to threaten to push that back, and he does push it back. But this is fine for B, right? It just needs to keep his trade alive. Although the villager count really starting to rise quickly for Anatan. Just a three villager or three eco unit deficit. Does snipe a villager though with the knights. Nice little snipe. First blood. Spearman going to push this back and I would expect to see a couple more archers for B. He's going to need them. A lot of spearmen popping out. How many barracks has he got? Just the one? Yeah, he's just got just the one. Maybe he's, was he supervising? It's kind of kind of kind of crazy how much he's able to produce. There's the second barrack, so certainly spearmen going to come out in large numbers. He's going to need a bit more archers here. B does have the blacksmith getting the melee armor upgrade. Does he have steeled arrow? Not not just yet. The attack armor coming in, or well, the attack rather, uh, melee attack for Anatand from the blacksmith. Those spearmen will do extra damage. Oh, we're going to snipe a villager or two, maybe. Does get away with it with the wheelbarrow. Garrison's inside the village and the spearmen can look to snare out one of those knights. It's just kind of expensive to lose a knight. It's not ideal. I'm not sure why I didn't charge them to kill that. Gonna take the fight. Gonna try and protect the archers, the horsemen on the front lines with the spearmen. Oh, that's not a great fight for B, I don't think. There's def definitely enough spearmen to deal with enough damage. The horsemen aren't going to be doing all that much, but it's more about the spearmen. If the spearmen could go down, then there's a good way that B can push us back. He's going to take the fight and just kill us. He will take losses. He's trying to save the weak knights. Does get a couple of them out. Takes severe casualties. He will win the fight eventually, but I mean, he lost a lot in the process, right? Like, he lost a lot. Trying to back off now. I wonder if B has chivalry. Because uh, he wants to be heating up these units. He does actually have chivalry. So yeah, those units will be heating up nicely. Now, because of that fight though, suboptimal for B is getting pushed back a little bit. Decent number of spearmen. Archers in good numbers though for the French and good micro there. The spearmen were heading back and the archers picked them apart. He turned around, but it was just a bit too late on the knights. A couple of horsemen are going to raid on the west side. Might look to try and chase that down. Engages against the spearmen. He's just using the charge attacks very, very nicely. Healing away the weak knights. Will he save that one? He does. And he's going to look to heal up now. Nice micro by B. 24 minutes to 5. This is looking good. Should get the first. I think it's probably the first trader that. Yeah, it's the first trader that Anatan's got. Finally, after 30 minutes. It's actually very impressive that B's managed to keep all these units alive. We'll lose his second trader. But all in all, I think B will be very happy with that. Trade has been operating for a long time and decent amount of gold coming in. Yeah, 29 traders in total. But we do see the castle age coming in for Anatand. That's going to give him a bit of a tech boost. He's also going for a keep, it seems. A lot of villagers on, on stone. The question is, where does he put the keep? Oh, I've got an... I mean... I suspect he's going to put a keep in the middle of the map. Just to try and direct the trade, else, uh, the trade elsewhere. Maybe on the sacred site. Could be a good option. I mean, this would be a nice spot, right? Protecting the sacred site, protecting that gold vein, denying the trade route. But it would be possible for B just to send the trade northwards. But still, he needs to try and deny the trade as much as possible. Now, speaking of Castle Age, 3DB will be going up to the next stage with the Royal Institute. New playing for a bit of a castle age spike in power. He wants the uh, the the cheaper upgrades, the imperial age upgrades, with a thirty percent saving, which is very very nice. I guess he he's happy with the trade, and uh, will be using that to fund his economy rather than the guild hall. Villagers come out to try and fight out the horsemen. There is a weak villager there, so Anatan would be doing well to try and snipe that. It doesn't though. A charge attack comes out from the knights, and he pushes this back very nicely. Villagers going to chase down. They head back to the fishing again. And now there is that Castle Age for B. This gives an opportunity for Anatan to go forward though with his units and try and be, build that keep before the uh, the units are upgraded for the French. And he's going to get the veteran seat for the spearmen so the knights really won't be able to dive this and there aren't a significant number of archers to pose too much of a problem. It's going to go to actually kill the trade whilst the keep goes up. Now the Chinese villagers do build faster. Will the French 
come in with their knights, we shall see the traders redirecting their routes, going northwards instead. Not a bad call. A large army, 43 military for beer. That's actually kind of crazy how it's funding all of this. Comes down to just how effective the trade is. Going to go for the gold in the middle now. That is uh, Anatan, of course. These are, these are castle age units now. Veteran Royal Knights. And he's also getting bloodlines. And getting veterancy to the archers. That's going to be a very, very dangerous army. From the French. He does gonna need, he's going to need some siege, though. To try and take this keep down. Although knights could probably torch it quite nicely. Trade being redirected. Let's just see how the trade is now. Uh, now that it's going northwards. Wait, wait a minute, what? 56. Oh, it's got a third market. Holy moly. 73 gold. Okay, it was a, it's a very big drop off, isn't it? Compared to the trade going westwards. Yeah, look at that. 120 up to 73. Like almost half the trade coming in. But still, at least some trade is better than no trade. But that one keep doing great work for Anatan, at least trying to deny the trade for B as much as possible. Going for more stone on the map is Anatan. Maybe another keep could be nice. And he has started to wall up, carving the map in half if he can. Just the one lancer going to the wood line. Should be able to get a villager out of this, which is kind of nice. A little pop up there on your screen. Don't forget to give the video a like and a subscribe as well if you enjoy the content. More importantly, hit that notification bell if you want to see when I post games for Age of Empires for the casted games. I do it pretty much every day now, so it's a daily content for you guys to enjoy if you enjoy it. The Knights are going to ride in from the French. 3DB looking to get some value now. He's feeling aggressive. And I don't blame him with the number of Knights he's got. He could do, definitely do some damage. It's kind of uh, looking to see... Oh, this could be dangerous for Anatan. Oh, this is smart. We're just sending one knight there. If he can track that down, then it'd be absolutely huge. Where are the other group of knights? Going to go around the back of the base to the farms. He's really looking to raid. The villagers, do they get out of there? Yeah, he's managed to escape. That could have been a massacre, you know. There's an Imperial official there as well. 12 villagers and Imperial... Uh-oh. Guys, he might catch it. Well, the villagers going down on the farms, on the granaries. Oh, oh, the villagers coming back into the playpen. And the spearmen going to go there just to defend... Nicely done by Anatan to keep those guys alive. Unlucky if you be in some ways not to not to get the kills. But, oh, that's devastating. He's killed so many villagers on that wood line. 14 villagers have been decimated. And I think he just dives this, right? Like, well, maybe not now. Because the villagers are, are safe. He needs to back away there, B. Kind of lose a lot of their lives unnecessarily otherwise. But look at the village account. Almost identical. Well, I should probably say eco account, really. Now yeah, I was just going to try and micro. There's a lot of spearmen there. The miniature number is looking strong for Anatan, but so is it for B as well. He needs those uh, those archers to, to push away the spearmen. He's just charging forth, and the lance is really for Anatan getting values. It's kind of hurting a lot of those archers on the retreat. Back in the middle. There's that keep still doing well to deny that trade going horizontally. A lot of units in the middle of the map. Now, stone is being gathered by by B. He has the first keep already in where, where we expected it to be, so cheaper units could play a big role in this game. So both players almost reaching 200 population. That's where things start to get a bit scary. wonder whether B might be eyeing up the Imperial Age. He's got enough gold, not quite enough food yet. Has broken through. Don't quite know how. Is it an overchop? Potentially. A couple of knights ride in and get some more villagers. 20 villagers have been killed. And unfortunately trade... In, wait, what's going on? Has he not redirected his trade routes? It looks like he has. Just a stray trader. Didn't get his map bearings right at all. Trying to break through on the left now. And he will break in. But uh, what damage can he find? Will the villagers back away? He's going to try and get an outpost. But I mean, he should see this is happening, right? And uh, oh, this could be a problematic situation. Anatan, he does react now, pulls the villagers away. And should be on time. Yeah, he's going to send the units there now. And the spearmen will be there to fight. But does he have enough? I think he does. And Nesta B's as well. That'll rip through the archers. He's going to take the engagement. I'm not sure about this for B. He backs off for now. 
Those are, that's a crazy number of spearmen. Holy smokes. He needs mangonels, maybe. Oh, Lance is trying to cut off the retreat. Nicely done. Village is going out to Shorefish. Yeah, B's not, not keen on fighting this. Not just yet, but a couple of Lancers are being thrown away by the Chinese. 84 military to 75. And units still building up in numbers. More stables. Holy smokes. How many stables has he got? Seven stables in total here, B. Well, he's going to take the fight. He splits up the army. The spears are pushing back to the, defend the villagers. Nesta B's get off, but they don't go on the archers. There's Nesta B's three of them. That's actually pretty dangerous. Quite scary. They're focusing the archers now. A lot of them are being ripped apart. The, the knight's diving in. He can't get access to the Nesta B's. They're being protected by the spearmen. He has to back away. He has to run away. He's going to get a pincer movement, but Anatan, he's wise to the ruse. The spearmen are looking to defend those Nesta Bs. A decent number of them of them still there. Nice at diving in. Will he get a Nesta Bs? I mean, I don't know how I feel about this fight for Bs. Throwing away a lot of premium units. I mean, he's, he's throwing away knights to, to spearmen. That's just not what he wants. He only gets one Nesta Bs out of all of that. Holy moly, that's a lot of units to go down for... I mean, I don't know how I feel about that. That was a bit rough. You can, just, you can see the destruction value. Slightly ahead by Anatand. The resource is looking nice for B. Does have plenty of food in the bank. Could consider going to that Imperial Age, but he's being chased down by Spearman. Oh, he's going to dive in the middle. Now, boiling oil isn't in yet. Looking to get spring oil in placement. The villagers will go down. There's 15 garrison inside the keep. Not enough space there, though. I think the archers probably focused this down. I would expect the knights just to torch down the keep. Focus on the villagers first, though. First things first. That's what they want to do. Couple of knights on the west side healing up. Um, all right, he's not going to bother torching this down. He's just going to go straight past it. Fair enough. Anatan trying to get some uh, optimistic walls here on the west side. Outpost going up. Just to get some vision for bees. Looking to try and take the side of the map a little bit. Nesta bees. They do fire off. Doesn't get too much value though in the middle. Spearmen are there to protect. Military numbers looking good for Anatan, but mostly trash units in the form of uh, spearmen and archers. Actually, mostly just Spearman. It's just Spearman less to bees at this point. Holy smokes. Archers just trying to pick off as much as they possibly can. The trade. How's that looking now for B? 46 traders. Not too shabby at all. Pretty even on the eco count. Both players actually reaching 200 population more or less now. Looks like uh, the Chinese looking to get another keep somewhere on the map. Now, interestingly, um, B doesn't actually have any of the relics. Could potentially get these. He is in the castle age, of course. Anantand has two of his own relics. Neither player have got any sacred sites. Couple of villagers going down, though. B has killed 33 so far. And the lack of mobility for Anantand is kind of hurting him a little bit. Losing villagers. No spearmen to defend that location. And he's kind of going into the heart of the base, maybe. Look to slap some villagers on gold. Could potentially do it. The knights are going to dive in. And he's going to get... Uh oh It's going to be an absolute massacre on that gold vein. The villagers can't escape. Does have boiling oil, but that's been nerfed recently. Look at that. 46 villager kills. Spearman looking to try and attack the trade now. He's had enough Anatan to play defensive. Going to have to disrupt the trade. Got to do something. Knight's going to ride in. The trouble is the Spearman aren't on hand to defend. A couple of Nesta Bs, a couple of Spearmen. It's a fight that potentially B could take. A, mon a monk coming in with another relic. Third for the Chinese. And the trade is being shut down. B looking just to cut that off and just to bring the units back. We'll need most of the archers. That's a lot of traders going down, but it's going to be the Red Palace for B. He's going to go for the Red Palace on the west side. I like this move, actually. He denies the potential for trade. For, well, yeah, kind of denies the trade. Anatan, but more importantly, gathers uh, a lot of these things. Safe safe reserve for these uh, the fish, the wood, and possibly this gold vein as well. And it's, it's very much Anatan's side of the map, right? So it's, it's always nice to have that side. If you can. The spearmen have been taken apart. But, you know, losing this is not a problem for Anatan. Still getting value with the spearmen. A lot of value. Just not enough archers. There's the Imperial Age now. I could look to get the uh, the Elite Knight upgrade. It's probably the first natural things that B would want to do. He's getting greased axles. He's getting get enlistment incentives. Which uh, reduce the cost by an extra 5%. Again, the blacksmith upgrades as well. A couple of spearmen are going to dive that keep. But not optimal. But he's getting a decent value with the spearmen, that's for sure. Still alive. And picking off traders. How many traders does B have now? He's lost a lot. He's down to 37, so he's lost about 13-odd. 
The economy on the west side very protected though by that red palace. The villager number very equal for both players or eco numbers very equal. But B does have a superior military number and it's because of the spearmen being obviously sacrificed to get rid of trade. Where are these villagers off to? Farming transition coming out for the French. It's not often you see that because obviously there's a lot of shorefish to be had. Slowly but surely it's being uh, taken though. Oh, more knights possibly going down. Knight's going to get charge attack. He's going to take the fight. Oh, this is a nice grouping up of units now for 3DB. Imperial Age will be coming in for the Chinese very shortly with the Spirit Way. This could be rough for an attack because going up to the Imperial Age without that many units. And we just saw the uh, elite upgrade coming in for the French Royal Knights. Does he have the standing army to defend here, Anatan? Now, we've talked about it before on this channel. When you age up, that's often when you're most vulnerable. And will 3DB take up the age up for the Chinese as a signal to attack? We'll have to see this keep still standing. I wish you could see how many kills this thing's got because it's probably got a lot of kills up to now. Almost has another keep potential for the Chinese to build. We'll decide where we'll see where he decides to put it. A lot of farming transition coming out. Going to defend the gold and the uh, the farms here. Nice spot actually. Just defends this. It's got a lot a, a lot of keeps in a defensive position. Anatand. It's kind of a bit more exposed here, though. We'd love to see keep here. If you've got to keep this, then he's kind of so, so covered in terms of static defenses. Playing it for the late game. But certainly a very heavily pop efficient unit, the, the French Royal Knight. How many has he got? 42 of them. He's also got some of the cannons. A very strong siege unit for the French. It's the most powerful siege cannon, in fact, would you believe? There you have it. You heard it here first. Yeah, 500 damage versus building. That keep will not last much longer. No way to protect that now. And potentially B could go for Sacred Sites. Tithe Barns coming in for Anatan. Does have three of the relics after all. And B's just ignoring the relics at this point. I guess he's got trade, so who really cares? A lot of villagers on that gold vein. Now the thing is for Anatan, he's going to struggle for, for gold soon, I think. So you've got to consider in this map and this match because B's got trade, right? He's got, he's got gold income guaranteed. Nester B's get a couple of shots off of the cannon. Does a lot of damage. The knight's going to charge in. Should be able to snipe off one of the Nester B's with quite a few spearmen there. Needs to be careful not to lose them. Archers are coming in and getting involved. These are elite archers now against elite spearmen. But the keep's still alive. Three cannons will take care of the keep and then that will leave these villages exposed. They are trying to garrison inside. The knight's diving in. The ram coming out. That's not going to last very long. The village is going down. Down to 110 economy units now. Anatan losing... Losing precious economies. Also getting the Imperial Palace. So a lot of resources. It kind of being sunk in into 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 the landmarks. And he's gonna need he's gonna need production. Look at the banked up resources for B. If he loses nice, it doesn't matter, just make more. Probably won't want to lose this. Yo, I don't like the look of this. This is looking bad. B, get out of there. That's not a good fight for him. He needs a way of dealing this. Maybe, maybe Mangonels. Just getting a mass of Mangonels could be good shout. He's got the archers. The problem is the spearman can always chase it down and dictate the push this back. Oh, he's going to fight. He's going to fight. Holy smokes, B doesn't care. He's going to fight with the knights in the front line, with the archers in the back line, with the cannons firing away on the production buildings. Knights looking so, so tanky, though. They are taking the fight. I'm not sure if he's got biology, but if he has, it would be good for him because he's going to need it. A lot of spearmen static. Defenses are not to be seen for the Chinese. Does have the defender's advantage, though. So the units are trickling forward, but the same could be said for B's army. He's going to win the fight with the French Royal Knight. Arguably the most pop efficient unit in the game. Could make an argument for the Deadly Elephants, but that's not what we're seeing today. It's going to be the French Royal Knights. He's losing so much though, B. He's taking the fight. I guess he just expects his economy stronger. And he does win the fight, and now he's pushing heavy. We talked about how much his economy will push him through. He's just got the ability to break night after night after night, and he's keeping on doing it. Population still at 178 for B. Trickle down to 138. Anadand isn't able to keep up. Doesn't have the food income that he needs. B going to charge again with another group of knights. He's lost so many units, but he just doesn't care at this point. Absolutely insane. He's actually going to just take the fight. We're back to where we wanted to be with the overlay. Apologies for that. But in any case, Cannon's still firing off on the production buildings. The trouble is Anatan can't really... Uh, how does he deal with this? Like, he needs to get rid of the siege. He needs to get rid of the cannons. 
quite desperately actually. Because the cannons are making good inroads. Doesn't have enough uh, stone for another keep though, Anatan, just yet. But the French Royal Knights, they're trickling forward again. Anatan has started to build up a large number of spearmen, but again, a lot of knights here for, uh, for, for B. Oh, he's got the Ribaldequins. That could dish out a lot of damage on those spearmen. Now B has activated the Sacred Site timer. 10 minutes on the clock. Going to take out buildings as he can. Spearmen going to look to, to just die the cannons. Cannons need to be careful. Ribaldequins, they need to be protected. The knights are going to dive in to try and protect those siege. They will get the surround archers on the back line. Ribaldequin, they're going to dish out a lot of damage. Holy smokes, this is going to be a sight to behold with the Ribaldequins ripping through those spearmen. The spearmen are getting quite close and personal though. And the knights have been taken out. Well, the vast majority of them in any case. Archer's still working on to try and defend the Ribaldequins. Ribaldequins being poked and prod. I think the Ribaldequins are very exposed, but they're not being targeted. They're going to get a lot of shots off. A lot of spearmen do die, but the Ribaldequins will go down eventually. Knights are trickling in to try and defend the Ribaldequins, but I'm not sure. In fact, will the Ribaldequins win this? I'm not so sure. There's one left. He's dishing out so much damage, though. I think spearmen will get him in the end, trying to back off. Oh, he's kept alive. The knights, they came to the aid of that Ribaldequin. He's backing off. Will there be a villager to come out to repair? He actually won that fight. It's actually kind of bonkers. How does B keep doing this? Look at the economy. It's just what it is. It's the economy. So, so strong at the moment. Decent farming economy. And two keeps to defend. Look at the production. It's so, so nice. Watching B playing the French. Holy moly. Oh, going to be a kind of a wood game here. Holy smokes. Going to the middle of the map. Does have a wood line here on the west side if he needs to, to rely on that Anatand. But a forward keep potentially coming out for B. Sacred side approaching. Sacred side victory approaching rather for B. Eight and a half minutes still remaining. But again, spearmen. Mass spearmen for the Chinese. Oh, but the Rebold Quinn. If that's protected, it's going to dish out so much damage. You can see them being absolutely ripped to pieces, those spearmen. Anatand, he doesn't have an answer to the Rebold Quinn. He needs some anti-siege. The knights are tanking on the front lines. We're Baldequin on the back lines with the archers involved too. Villagers looking to build that keep up. And uh, they're still building. The cannon emplacement in that outpost on the back line there. Just there. Dishing out damage. With Baldequin has got so many kills. Again, the spearmen are starting to overwhelm a little bit. But they keep going up. And the uh, stone walls to try and protect anything going around. The knights trickling in. The Baldequin does get sniped eventually with a spring old. Anatan finally getting that anti-siege up that he so badly needed. But again, the French army just keeps winning the fights. Spearman just doesn't seem to be enough. It feels like this is almost a Spearman only challenge for Anatan. Got 6,000 gold in the bank. Slowly being pushed. Could actually break through here as well very soon. A trade still up and running. 58 traders. It's actually going to go back to the uh, the Western trading post. That gold income is going to look incredibly crazy. 4,000 gold per minute. Knights diving in with the archers as well. And this is going to be a wrap maybe. I'm not sure if Anatan comes back from this. If he clears out the army, B is just going to make more. Six and a half minutes almost on that sacred site timer. B is winning that fight. And Anatan, despite having the defender's advantage, he's struggling to hold on. If he can just hold on for a bit longer, though, could there be a way back for him? He does have enough stone almost for a keep, just a bit more. Maybe he could drop another keep. Spearman pushing this back a little bit. The archers aren't doing as much as they need to be, but the knights are trickling in. But, well, Anatan holding for now does lose the astronomical clock tower, though, because of the cannon. And the sheer production capabilities for the Chinese holding him on, holding him in this game for now, at least. Villagers have broken through. Wait, what's this? 28 villagers, Chinese one's going to go past the keep. What's he going to try? Is it going to be a keep drop, maybe? Try and deny the trade. He's going to try something drastic here. He's going to lose a lot of villagers. 149 economy for B. Oh, he's going to try and get a keep here. I mean, he will get it. It's actually a strong position. And it will hurt the trade. He's lost a lot of villagers just to achieve that. On the front lines, knights are diving in once again. Fighting underneath the keep there, Anatan, with the spearmen. It just feels... I mean, the, the knights are so, so strong. I mean, apparently, apparently Spearman are supposed to counter them, but they're struggling today. 
The pop efficiency of the night is so strong. Here come the more cannons. Wait, is that four cannons? Holy smokes, the economy for B is looking so, so strong. And the trouble is, like, all the infrastructure is going down for the Chinese. The keep is up. It's being repaired. Trade is coming in. Question is, I mean, I mean, it would delay, it would delay the trade for now. But with the amount of gold that's banked up, for B, it shouldn't be a problem. It's going to get another keep Anatan. I wonder if you use the market to buy that. Quite possibly. The issue for Anatan is got to deal with the siege somehow. These three cannons. Uh, it, it's a problem. It's a problem. It could be too much of a problem. Will we see any cannons back at home for B just to take these keeps out and then re-establish trade? Heck no, just going to just nerf the trade route a little bit. Not that much. Still 124 gold coming in here with this market. Two keeps to do that. And it feels rough for Anatan at this point. He's struggling. And I think, I mean, B, to be fair, his food income is not all that great, but there's only four and a half minutes on that sacred site timer. It doesn't feel like Anatan can reach those sacred sites. There's a keep there that he has to get through. Let's get through the military first as well. And the other sacred site in the middle of the map, even harder to get to. I don't think Anatan can break through. He needs a, a critical fight, you feel. Maybe one big last push, one big army. Keep still running for the Chinese, but I think, actually, to be honest, B probably doesn't mind this, right? He just needs to stop producing from this market and the Chamber of Commerce. Just keep everything trading to that market and it should be fine. So we're going to push in with the Knights diving in. And Anatan's army number is looking decent actually. 67 to 43. But the trouble is his economy is just not as strong. He might be looking to take out the uh, the cannons. If he can get that, that'll be absolutely a huge snipe. Cannons are backing off now. Will he get the surround? Will he get the block off? We'll get one cannon. Will he get any more? I'm not so sure. He's going to fight underneath the keep. But, you know, if he takes out the cannons, it could be a way back. He just at least halts the French push. Trouble is, he has to be the one pushing. He has to deactivate the sacred site timer somehow. He has to get rid of the keep first. So he's only got three and a half minutes to do that. And yeah, B can just ignore these keeps now for now, actually. It's so unfortunate that Anatan didn't get the value that he maybe would have wanted. And uh, I don't think he has that third granary, actually. He should be able to get three out of that. In any case, heading into the 38th minute almost. But three minutes on the timer. Yeah, it looks like Anton's going to go for one big push, right? Melee units, Spearman. Does he have boiling oil? He does be. 81 units, military units, that is. And it's going to be population capped very soon, Anatan. Maybe he's looking to go to the, uh, the the middle sacred side. Just go past that keep. Not as much defending that. Uh, I take the back. There was a keep there. The trouble is, if Anatan pushes out to try and de deny the sacred sites... Well, B's just going to take out what's remaining of the economy. Yeah, he, he deletes the wall. He's trying to get through, but little does he know. There's mostly stone walls there. There's still a little bit of a gap there, I think. He could potentially get through. Yeah, he's going to try it. He's going to go through. Concern is, is B... And there's going to be no retreat for the spearmen. Very difficult to make it through the woods. Very difficult. They're trying to push through, shoving in, shoving their way through. But look at that. 3DB was looking to get a keep there. Won't manage it in the end. Going to deny... Or at least try and decap the sacred site. Will he manage it, though? 38 minutes... He's going to get the keep up. The army's going to head in that position now. This is strong because he's got the army to focus on. Anatan can't focus on the... Wait, no. He's pulling away. He doesn't need to do that. Just needs to deactivate the sacred site. The sacred site timer has been paused for now. Spearman going to engage against the knights. Knights are heading towards the keep, making sure the keep gets as much value. Villagers coming out to build the keep and he will lose some villagers, but B won't mind. He's got the economy just to build more units and the Spearman trying to take care of the archers. These guys have got incendiary arrows. They're being picked apart. Traders just getting involved just to be annoying in the pathing we can see them do that and it's actually going to be acting as a meat shield the traders be using it as a as a meat shield the keep will go up and i think we'll see the tap out because there's just no way for anatan to decap the sex site the countdown hasn't started just yet so he's held on to it for now but not for much longer they keep in such a strong position trying to get another keep as well be getting another keep super super strong is not going to be able to def get to that sex site again that was possibly the last chance and he's going to get a keep on this sex site and well that is it ladies and gentlemen with that number of cannons holy moly Anatan knows he's out. I hope you guys enjoyed this cast game on Frisian Marshes. Take care and see you next time.